today's tribute, today's tribute is nonetheless um, exhortations is going to be focused on the family with honing in on the fathers as it is a tribute to Father's Day. And before I go any further in the conversation or in the service, I want to pause and say a very happy Father's Day to a very happy Father's Day to a powerful man of God, my husband, uh, Sergeant Timothy Allen. I salute you, sir. I've seen it. Um, and it's to behold uh, the, how loving you are to your children. And um, and happy Father's Day to you. Happy Father's Day. Uh, today's exhortation, brothers and sisters, is in tribute to Father's Day, as we mentioned earlier. It's brought to you by myself and Brother Rob. We will be having um, a conversation, if you will, a conversation focusing on the family, um, honing in on the fathers. You're going to hear perspective from a man's perspective of what he thinks about Father's Day, uh, a tribute uh, to the fathers out there uh, through their struggles and triumphs. Uh, amen. We're going to hear perspective from a mother's perspective, from a child's perspective, and from God's perspective, because who has the final say? Jesus has the final say, and let the love flow, amen. And as we go through this conversation, we invite everyone to pause at this time to like and share and invite someone into the Zoom room, invite someone into this Facebook conversation onto our actual CEA page. And we'd love to hear um, your feedback as we are going to share to you a tribute to fathers and the family. Brother Rob. Thank you, Sister Christine. So yes, this is a very touchy topic, uh, one that we need to really discuss and go into a little bit. So I'm just gonna ask that you pray my strength and that I can keep it together this morning, uh, myself and Sister Christine as well. But um, yeah, I just, I'm so proud of, you know, the wonderful fathers that are out there and doing a great job in keeping the family structure together. So that's what we're going to be talking about this morning. So what is a father? Well, we need to look no further than our father's prayer when it comes to recognizing our heavenly father. And that can be found in Matthew, the book of Matthew chapter six, verses nine through 13. And it reads, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For our Father, Abba Father, the Creator, our Heavenly Father, the one that is responsible for giving us life. But when we look in the dictionary, the Father is defined as the male parent or the one responsible for impregnating a woman. But when we really look at a father and what he's truly supposed to represent, we want to find a better description of the father. And that comes from the word dad, which infers that the dad is the one responsible for raising the child, being a permanent fixture in their life to give them guidance and direction. So as we talk about fathers today, we are more so describing a dad. But since we do not use the term daddy's day, just know that when we are referring to Father's Day, we are indeed talking about the dads, the ones that are in the lives of their childs. So what is a father? A father is a son's first superhero and a daughter's first love. A father is the head and leader of the family that is looked upon for guidance and direction. A father teaches his son what it means to be a man and shows his daughter 
that any man that comes into her life must treat her as a queen. A father teaches his kids how to ride a bike, how to play sports, and how to compete while exemplifying a good line of sportsmanship. A father also teaches his kids how to fix things and how to be a problem solver that will become very resourceful. A father is a provider and a protector of his family that is looked upon with great admiration. And of course, the father is looked upon as the disciplinarian. And you never want to come, come face to face when you're fought with your father when accused of doing something wrong. So these are just some of the basic characteristics that are found in our fathers. Brothers and sisters, as I speak to you today, you know, it is of great importance that we understand that your children, you know, they worship the ground in which you walk on. You know, the most thing, the most precious thing that you can give to your children is your time, because that's all they really want from you. They just want to know that they are loved and they are felt for and that they are a part of your life. And the biggest reason why we find that so many of our brothers are in jail or strung out on drugs is because that family structure has been broken. And the fathers have been removed from the household. And brothers and sisters, you know, we must all come together and come in agreement and put an end to this division. Because united we shall stand, but divided we shall fall. And it is no secret that if you cut off the head, which is the father of the family, the body will surely die. So why do we keep falling into these traps of getting the courts involved in family situations? Just seeking revenge because the relationship didn't work out between the mother and the father. This is a no-win situation for everyone involved and it becomes very detrimental to the children because they probably don't understand what's truly going on but all they know is that daddy is no longer there. So I just want to share uh, a little testimony of my, my journey into becoming a father and experiencing fatherhood. So I became a father at a, a relatively young age in my uh, early 20s. Um, I had just came home from the service. I was stationed in Norfolk, Virginia, and I live in New Jersey. Uh, so I came back home to New Jersey, but I was still in a relationship, a long distance relationship with the future mother of my children. So I should go back and forth to Virginia every so often, and we would, you know, try to build on our relationship. Uh, and during that time, we co conceived a child. Um, and during the first two years, wow, it was the greatest, greatest experience. But uh, as time went on, you know, we started to differ in our ways and the, the relationship kind of fell apart. But um, we still had another child during this time period. So I had two sons and I used to go down to Virginia uh, every, every couple of weeks or every month to see my kids, spend time with them. And, you know, it, it was just the greatest experience, you know, the best times of my life, just to be there with my kids. You know, I used to go down and I would arrive like one, two in the morning, and I just wanted to pick them up and wake them up and take them out of the crib. And, you know, she used to fuss at me, don't you wake them boys up? But, you know, I just, you know, wanted to embrace them love on them and be there with them. So as time went on, you know, we continued on, on this path. I, I used to come down every month, see my kids and they started to grow and mature and started to go get a school age. And, you know, the, the relationship uh, became more 
adverse and frictional. So we we had um we had a parting of the ways, but at this particular time, we were still amicable with, with one another. I can still see my kids. So it was still good, you know. But as time went on, the relationship continued to sour and, you know, emotions got involved. And then that's when uh, I was put in a place where the courts got involved and I could no longer see my kids. There was no form of communication with my kids. The phone number was changed. They had moved to a different address. So all the lines of communication were broken. So here I am. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. It is um, a tribute that we're having today on the early bird service. Yeah. And we decided to have a, a conversation about fathers. And for anyone under the sound of our voices today that knows someone who's going through um, challenges as a father, even challenges as a mother making the right decision with, and uh, losing the focus of the children, we encourage you to please share this um, this conversation with them, Brother Paul. Yeah, so um, eventually, I uh, sent some, uh, I, I still had some friends down in the Norfolk, Virginia area. So I used to tell them to go by the former address and their grandmother's address to reach out to them and see if they can get their contact information so I can get back in touch with my kids. And so I found out where they lived. And so I came back down once again. And of course, um, knocked on the door, but no answer but I can hear them in the background. So I know they're in the house. You know, um, so eventually I did get to see my kids. I never really pressed them about that because I know how that dynamic works because I went through the same thing as a little boy with my mother preventing our father from seeing us. So I know how that felt. And that was the last thing I wanted to see happen to myself and my kids. So eventually, you know, um, we put our differences aside and we came to an agreement that, you know, I, I would be able to see the kids. And um, so it, it, it worked itself, it worked itself out eventually, but it was a struggle. So, you know, brothers, if you're going through a situation like that, if you've been in a situation like that, I definitely can relate. So my word to you is don't give up on your kids. Be them for them. Do everything within your power to make sure you stay in the life of your children. So, you know, um, as time went on and uh, they went on to high school and graduated from school. We, we still have a, a great relationship with my kids and um, I don't get down to see them as often as I would like to uh, just because of scheduling conflicts. But, you know, it, it's just great to see uh, the great young men and, and ladies that they've grown up to be. Uh, my oldest son actually has two children. Uh, he has a fiance. And there he is in the household. He is in the household with his kids. So I am just so greatly encouraged by that. Although he's not married to the young lady as of yet, just to know that he is there with his children, with his family, as a man, the father figure, the head of the household within his family, it just gives me great pleasure to know that you know that that curse that's what it is it's a curse a generational curse it's going to be severed it's going to be broken so yes if it starts with my son then that 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 is the greatest re reward to me just to know that he is the one that's going to take that step and keep that family structure back together 
So I just want to encourage each and every one of you, be there for your kids, for you are the greatest influence in their lives. Don't let the streets take your kids, because once the streets get them, you may not never get them back. Sister Christine. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Today's exhortation is a tribute to the family homes on the fathers and dads. I'm going to be speaking to the mothers and the children. The mother's perspective. The mother's perspective is one often from a situation of pain, sometimes resentment. Um, and we've heard the testimony from a man's perspective, a father's perspective, and how that caused pain. And so I'm speaking to the females, the mothers who are in a situation of choice, a situation of choice, choose love. The scripture declares in the book of Matthew that man hath no greater love than to lay down his life for his friend. To lay down, I say, your relationship issues, or lay down your, um, your rights, you know, maybe you are right. Maybe you you are you have every right to feel slighted or what the case may be, but your relationship with your significant other is your relationship, not your children's relationship. We um, have been blurred as far as where the real uh, responsibilities lie. Within the household, the mother is at the helm. And as a God-fearing person, um, you know, you get to perspective that you have, you didn't choose the children, the children didn't choose you. You were giving, these children are gifts to us as parents. And what we do with that, we have a great responsibility to act according, act according to love and act according to their best interest. Um, I have a, a story of my own and a man in my life, my father, He's been there. He's been there in the beginning. Um, taught me to ride a bike. And then he disappeared for 20 years. For whatever reason and for whatever seasons. And I had a choice when he showed back up 20 years later and I thought to myself, you know what? I have a choice to forgive. And I have a choice to move on because Brother Up talked about breaking generational curses. And there's not a lot of children that have grandfathers in their lives. Grandmothers, God bless them, worth their weight in gold. Um, grandfathers, just the same. God bless you all, grandfathers that are in the lives of your children and resetting that generation because you have an opportunity where you, as a child's perspective, and I'm speaking to the children, you, you don't lose never lose respect for your father. No. The scripture declares that honor thy mother and thy father all the days of your life. Thy mother and your father. And this is a life lesson that we're imparting in you. As children's perspective, Brother Rob says he was in that in that situation where he was a child looking on. Now we as adults can impart in you that never lose respect for your, for your father, never lose respect for your mother. It is your lifeline. And I implore the, 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 the women who are upset and you have a right to be upset, but you have a choice to mend, build the bridges, build the heart of your children, build the heart of your children for, your, for, for, for the fathers that are out there. And I encourage all the men that are out there and I commend um, my father today. I smile because I remember a man that drove <laughs> four hours to Detroit from Toronto to buy me my first black dolly. And um, those that those are things that I remember and I choose to celebrate. The, the, the canker worm will come and the adversary will come and try to pull apart uh, the family, pull apart your, your heart. But trust me when I say that a, a child's love for their parent, nobody can ever come between that or should ever come between that. So mothers... Please, I implore you, understand that you, that's not your relationship to control. The mother, the, the mothers are there to nurture and nurturing the love between a child and the father is the best thing. You cannot buy love. Child support cannot, cannot um, supersede that bond. Um, 
and, and that privilege that we have as mothers to love it forward and love the children. Um, I'm in awe of today's uh, opportunity. I thank you very much, um, Bishop Pete Pinnock, for being a father to many. He's a young, uh, dynamic, and uh, you're going to hear about him more about the exhortation as we go forward in the service. But um, as, as far as CA Ministries, it's not because I have the, the logo over my shoulder. I'm telling you, you, you got the backing of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth in this ministry when we say that we're hanging on to every family and we're calling you to the table. Fathers, um, don't let your pride and don't let your guilt, don't let your guilt choke you. Call your children today. Call them today. They might not receive you, but they'll remember that you tried. Amen. God bless you. I remember my dad trying, and I thank you for coming back into our lives. Um, I want to say happy Father's Day to the next generation. <laughs> Tim Allen Jr., today's his first Father's Day. My husband's um, firstborn son, and they're loving it forward. Happy Father's Day to Joshua. Today's his first Father's Day. These young men, these young men that are coming up, we encourage you. Amen. We encourage you in the Lord. Yes, yes. And you, are, you are here um, to, to say, you know what? Um, I, I've seen it. I, I think I know what it looks like. But if you want to know what it feels like, come on in and join this ministry with us as well. We have awesome, awesome mentors like Brother Rob and so many others to mentor you as a man of God, um, as a man who wants to be a man of God. Amen. Bless the Lord. Um, <clears throat> things that I like about my father and things that I will always impart my father. I love his sense of humor. I've come to know him as an adult, very optimistic man. Uh, a, a man who has, I've seen, restart and re, um, overcome. Um, he's an overcomer, and I thank him for that. Um, and I also thank my mother for, yes, being the father at the time in the gap for many years. I salute my parents. Um, I salute my father, and I salute my, my spiritual father, Bishop Pinnock. I salute my heavenly father, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen for love. Brother Rob, do you feel the love? You feel the I forgiveness? feel the love. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Brother Rob, um, it's been my pleasure to have this organization um, with you today. Um, thank you for sharing. We've seen a, a part thank of your you. heart. Thank you. Yes. We've seen a part of your heart today, this morning, that we'll never forget. And we encourage everyone to, um, of course, share this conversation. At this point, we're going to conclude and remind you you of the scripture in the book of Matthew, no greater love that a man hath than love to lay down your life for a friend. And if you can lay down your life for a friend, you can put it aside and lay down your differences for a child. Come on. Come on. Mothers. Wow. 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 Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. We love you. We're in, in your corner. We're cheering on the men. We know the adversary. We know that the struggles is real. Um, but you have support. You have support. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen.